Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you a tool that could seriously change the game for us Blender users. We are diving into Houdini, where there is this new feature that makes complex simulations feel like a breeze. Snow, sand, water, mud, concrete, metal, all that stuff we dream of simulating without losing our mental health, yes it's possible now. I'm testing it with default settings straight out of the box and I will show you my result at the end of this video. So buckle up, because in the next few minutes we are going to see if this tool lives up to the hype and if it's finally time for Blender users to add a little Houdini magic in our arsenal. How many of us kinda avoided Houdini because yeah, it is insanely powerful, but learning it felt like signing up for a PhD in quantum physics. But things are about to change, because my friends, Houdini 20.5 just released a new MPM solver that's actually pretty friendly. MPM stands for Material Point Method, but we don't care about the name, so instead let me show you what I'm talking about. And and just to be clear, I'm a complete beginner at Houdini, I will assume that you are too, so if you don't understand everything that's okay, it's just about showcasing the power and the simplicity of this new tool. And also, in case you don't know, Houdini is node based, like the geometry nodes we have in Blender. Ok, in Houdini, let's call the default npm configuration and nothing more, so npm configure. And boom, that's it, we have a simulation. Let me explain to you how easy it is. We have a source. We have a collider and we have a container. So three components and a brain, the MPM solver, and that's it, nothing else. Now let's see each one of them. The source is like the main simulation. It will be the sand, snow, concrete, the mud, whatever you feel like. And if you want to change the material, you have some material presets already done for you. <laughs> Look at this beauty. You have snow, soil, mud, concrete, metal, jello, rubber, water, honey, sand. We are actually simulating snow. But uh, let's try uh, honey for example, here I will select honey, and boom, just like that we have some honey behavior. I don't even have to play with those values, and why would I do that anyway? I'm a Blender user, I just want to do a cool simulation and go back to my default cube. And for each preset, you can choose its behavior here. So we started with a snow a chunky, uh, let's try a sandy, so that was chunky. And boom, here is some sandy snow. Okay, you get it, this is the main part of the simulation. This is where you define what the simulation is going to be. And of course, you can combine multiple source of multiple type. For example, let's mix some honey with snow. I will duplicate those two nodes. I will change the height of this sphere, something like that. And then for the source, I will select the honey. And just for a better visualization, let's add a color, something like uh, brown. And now we can merge those two sources. And voila, we have some honey with the snow. Then we have the collider, and I think you already know what it is, but just in case, this is the object or the objects your simulation is going to collide with. Because yes, here also you can use different objects to collide with. Actually, we only have this box here, the red box. But for example, let's add another one. So I will duplicate this box here. I will change its size, something like that, and the rotation. Let's merge those two. And let's move this one somewhere around here. And now this box behaves as a collider as well. And just for your information, at this step, Houdini is creating VDBs that will represent our colliders. And just to keep things simple, a VDB is like a volume. So here we have those two cubes. And here we have the representation, the VDBs that Houdini will use to collide with the simulation. And here at the collider level, a super cool setting that you can play with is this sticky parameter where you can specify if you want the simulation source to stick to the collider or not. Let's remove the honey to have a better visualization for now. And let's use a sandy snow. So here, sandy. So this is without the sticky values. Now let me activate it. And here is the result with the sticky value activated. And of course, you can play with the friction and the stickiness in order to fit your need. And don't worry, we are going to test a moving collider in a few seconds, of course. But before, let's discover the third component. 
And the third one is the container. Here there are two settings you need to focus on. The most important one is uh, this uh, particle separation. This is like the resolution of your simulation. The lower the value is, the more grains you're going to have. And the simulation will look really good, but uh, painful for your computer to simulate. Actually, this is 0.025. This is more a value that you use for testing stuff. I noticed in uh, most of the official examples that 0.00 seven or less is a good production value and the second parameter is this boundaries thing but first we need to create a domain like in blender for fire and smoke simulation and here it's not mandatory to create one but just for the example so i add a box tab and a box and let me size it to be around my simulation so i will scale it to five and I move it around here. Let me connect the box to the container. And with this boundaries parameter, I can select the behavior of the simulation when it touches the domain. So you have open, close and delete. I will choose delete. It's not working because the simulation is not touching my box. So let me raise it. So now my box is very high. And now when I press play, everything disappears when it touches the box. It can be useful if you want your simulation to consume less resources. Okay, that's it. And of course, all those three components are going into the NPM solver here, which is like the brain of the system. Most of the time, we don't have to touch anything here. So let's just use the default settings for today and it will be perfectly fine. So to summarize, we have the source, which is the main simulation. We have the collider, the objects that will interact with the simulation and the container where we set the resolution of the simulation. It can't be easier than that. And trust me, it was not that simple before. Okay, now what if we have a moving collider? But first, let's delete everything. So we only have the source, the collider and the container. I will leave the box for now. Uh, for the source, let's create a box. So tab and box. And let's transform it to be on the ground. So I will use a transform node. And I will change the size of the box. Uh, so I will scale it down only on this axis. And here, if I press 3 on my numpad, I can see that the box is not on the ground. And to easily fix that, we don't have to move it manually. Let's just use a node for that. Match size. And here I select min. And now my box is correctly placed. Okay, that's good for me. Let's plug it to the source and let's see. Great, we have our grains here. Now let's create our collider. So tab and I will add a sphere. And I will move this sphere to start at the beginning of our source. So here I can press enter and move this guy around here. And let's scale it down, so maybe 0.5. Okay, so now I want this sphere to go through the source. So I will create an animation like in Blender. I will use a transform node again. And here at frame one, I will add the keyframe. So Alt and I click here. So we have this animation. Perfect. Now let's plug in our collider. Actually, I don't need this box. And now I press play and nothing happened. <laughs> this is because in the collider, we have to choose uh, instead of static, we have to choose animated rigid and we have three options, static, animated rigid and animated deforming. So this one is animated rigid and now it works perfectly. Guys, guys, do you imagine the possibilities? It could be a car here. And we can change the snow for water, mud, jelly, whatever we want. And of course, we can export this simulation to Blender. Okay, let's calm down and do a real case scenario. Let's start in Blender. I will use this beautiful combat suit created by the talented Hui Koi. I will put the link in the description. The combat suit is already rigged and compatible with Mixamo animations. And I want to insist, it's a fantastic piece of art, easy to render, photorealistic, and you will get the female version as well. So in Mixamo, I will grab this uh, walk animation. I import the animation in Blender and with the Mixamo add-on, source you select uh, this animation, then you select the combat suit and you click on apply animation. And voila, the animation is applied. Now we can delete the rig if you want. Then I will export the character in Alembic. So file, export, then you select Alembic. I will only include the selection and export Alembic. In Houdini, let's bring the MPM configure. So tab, MPM configure. And I don't want this box and I don't want this sphere. And now let's import our Alembic. So tab, Alembic. Here we select the file. 
Okay, cool. We have our animation in uh, Houdini. Let's do only uh, 90 frames. And I'm sure you already guessed it's going to be our collider. So let's plug it to the collider. For the source, let's create a box like we did before. So I did create this box and transform it. Now it's long enough to cover the entire animation. But the issue I have is how are we going to blend a clean surface like this in our environment back in Blender? It's a perfect plane and we don't find this in nature. But still, I want to be clear, we could stop there and it will be perfectly fine. Or we could flex a bit because we are in Houdini. So I will add a blast node to delete everything but the surface. I will create some subdivision like we do in Blender. So here it's a perfect plane and now it's a subdivide. Then I add this mountain node so our surface has a more organic look. Then I will extrude everything like we do in Blender. And because our object is not on the ground, I will add this match size node to put it on the ground. Okay, great. And now we have our source. And I want to simulate snow, so snow chunky is perfect for me. For our collider, we want to select this time animated deforming because the robot has some deformation when working. And now for my resolution, I will use 0.03. And we have a total of 11 million points. And then I will export the simulation in Alembic to import it in Blender. Let's check some images of our simulation. It looks great. Now we can export everything in Alembic to Blender. In Blender, to import the simulation, you click on the File, Import, Alembic, and you select your Alembic file. Great, so we have our simulation here. Now let's add a bunch of different assets from Quixel Megascans because they are all free until the end of the year. And if you missed this information, please check the video before it's too late. So I added all those assets and I just applied the material of this guy to our simulation. I added some cameras and for the light, I did use this HDRI. And that's it, here is the final result. Your silence echoes through the snow. I walk where you failed. You were creators, but also destroyers. And now you are nothing. I'm the last witness to your fall. I really like the result, and please remember that I did use everything by default. In conclusion, I'm so excited with this workflow and the possibilities we get with this MPM solver. I really think it works perfectly with Blender. And it's the first time that not only I'm able to create something by myself with Houdini, but it's also the first time that I understand what I'm doing. Okay guys, tell me what you think about this MPM solver in the comment section. I would love to hear your opinions. Take care.